Maybe. One second. Yeah. So. Uh, All right. Maybe not. We're getting there. Close the door. Uh huh. Nothing coming up yet. Give me one second. It's going to be horrible, horrible resolution. And I don't know why it altered that. You got it on best yeah. Well, why well, well, this does not want to go? So, okay, hold on, I'm going to go. Okay, hold on, I'm going to go. Oh, shit, so. Uh, well, <laughs> this is just, the, the, the presentation is not wanting to come up. It's not like this. Well, shall we go to try to download one more time? Okay. okay, well, I'll go ahead and start talking here in just a second. All right. Well, let me get back to the. Let me get back to the box and I'll download it again. And it'll come up. All right, well. Looks like it finally started. Uh, the, not, this, not, so. Well, we'll go with this. We'll make this work. That'll work. Okay. Not the best, uh, not the best solution. Uh, which, which one? This one? Both mics. Okay. All right, so. This one on, how do we? All right. Sorry about that. We had uh, technical difficulties. Uh, we're we're going to talk about uh, uh, Raspberry Pis. So today we're uh, w the the, the uh, talk how about a piece of pie. So I got my nice uh, uh, Raspberry Pi uh, Raspberry Pi pie. pie. Uh, this this was a. Uh, uh, what I did for the Gen Cyber Summer Academy here. We had this uh, this summer here at Augusta University. Uh, we we uh, had uh, all these kids. We had a uh, hundred uh, and no no no. We had uh, eighty, almost eighty students coming through this summer to uh, learn about cybersecurity, and we used uh, Raspberry Pi to show them. This is one of our uh, this is this is uh, one of our dinners that we that we had or that that we did the introduction the, introdu the uh, introduction to opening of the. Uh, of the camp, so that was our students that came through. What what we wanted to do was that we got the grant from, as you saw on the on the uh, first page here, was uh, from uh, Gen Cyber uh, from I guess University uh, with I guess University Gen Cyber. We got the grant from NSA, the, the Gen Cyber program, and uh, that is uh, to teach. Uh, they gave us a grant to uh, teach students, uh, bring them in for a week, and uh, teach them cybersecurity. What they, they we have uh, ten principles that we were trying to instill instill upon them. Uh, put these the ten principles: data hiding, which is basically encryption and, and other techniques, uh, abstraction, uh, domain separation, resource encapsulation, and conceptually simple, uh, modularity, minimization, least privilege, layering, process isolation. So these are all the the uh, these are all the concepts that we wanted to kind of instill upon the students and teach them early about when they're building systems to. Uh, Build these principles, and and these by by using these principles, you'll build more secure systems just because of using these principles. So, the way I I, I approached uh, going about this was, well, I wanted to use Raspberry Pi. So let's talk a little bit about what Raspberry Pis are, and, and why why do we hack with them? So everybody, I think everybody's probably heard of a Raspberry Pi. I'll give you a little bit more history about it. So obviously, it's a tiny little computer. You know, we got something.
So this is the size of a typical uh, raspberry. This is a little Raspberry Pi that, that we used in the camp. Uh, this one is a, a Raspberry Pi 2. There's Raspberry Pi 3s, which you actually use too. So uh, the uh, nice thing about them is they're full-blown computers. They, it's got quad-core ARM processor on these. They, they're, they're pretty powerful for what they are. This little thing runs full-blown operating systems, uh, run multiple operating systems. Um, and uh, the nice thing about them is they're easy to, to use, and they're easy to modify and uh, hook up things and hack with because they have uh, I/O uh, pins on them that let you uh, that let you connect up and uh, control things and do do cool things with them. So a um, little bit of history about Raspberry Pis. Now this doesn't work well because by PowerPoint side they were supposed to all fly in, but since PowerPoint died on me, uh, we'll, we'll go with this. Uh, up in the upper right hand corner. Up there, this this is a Raspberry Pi, the original Raspberry Pi. So there was there's been, there've been several models since they came out. They've they, they've only been out for four and a half years, and uh, they've gone through several models. So that was the original one uh, with one USB port and uh, and a uh, composite video out, and they did have HDMI. They came out with a second version here, uh, which is this. This is a Model B, uh, still had one. One uh, port, but they, uh, as you notice, a little smaller. They dropped the uh, composite port, and then over here, the third. Th this is the current revision of it. This is the Raspberry Pi three. Actually, that's the Raspberry Pi two. Sorry, this is Raspberry Pi two, but the Raspberry Pi two and three are almost identical. Uh, but they, uh, the, the, they now have uh, four USB ports and uh, the HDMI, and with the Raspberry Pi three, we added uh, wireless uh, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth to it. And then this is the little Raspberry Pi Zero, which we talk, which uh, Bob Joyce talked about this morning as well. So that, that's kind of a history of where Raspberry Pis are. So uh, there have been 10 million of these units sold uh, as of uh, last week. They sold the 10th million units. So 10 million of those little boards out in the world right now. Uh, as a, to celebrate, Raspberry Pi just announced they, they came out with this uh, Raspberry Pi 10 million anniversary uh, special edition Raspberry Pi kit, which you can buy from, from them. And, and it has a keyboard and a case and some other stuff. So so that, so that was cool. So so they've been out for four and a half years, so 10 million units. Very popular because the, 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 uh, this type of Raspberry Pi, which is the more portable, powerful one, and it's only $35 instead of that little Raspberry Pi Zero, like $5. So we... This is a little so 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 this is why the, the Raspberry Pi is so powerful. So this is actually a Raspberry Pi three, as you can tell. Uh, it says for Raspberry Pi three. So so the it has the row of uh, GPIO pins up here that lets you connect up and control things. So the, 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 the they'll give you output of five five volts on the pins, and they have different functions, which I'll show you in just a second. We still have the, it says the four USB ports. This is a ten one hundred Ethernet port. This is an audio and a composite video output port. It has a uh, this port right here is for uh, that one is the the camera port, the uh, uh, HDMI output. This is your USB power in. Uh, this is for the uh, for the uh, Raspberry Pi display. Then uh, the, you know, this is your main chip, your ARM core chip, and then this is a, a support chip, which is the peripheral chip, the I/O chip. So that's uh, basically what a what a Raspberry Pi three get get you. So. So that's the basic hardware. The uh, why we like to use them is because of this feature right here. The, this is the GPIO port. So so the GPIO it's a uh, it's a uh, twenty four pin uh, twenty four pin uh, dual header on the on the uh, on the board uh, has power and ground uh, which is nice. But then it has uh, all the green, all the green ones are, are the general purpose IOs. You can program these as individual IO ports, so that you can control each pin individually. Or if you set them up, there's few functions you can set them up to uh, run. Uh, so these two up here will run an IC squ I square C bus, which is uh, uh, inter IC interface. I think. So so it's basically for communicating between ICs. Uh, a UART a standard UART, which is the old serial communication, right? And then it has a serial peripheral interface down here that you can that you can turn on as well. So you can so you can enable or disable these functions and and use these pins however you want. 
So you could use the expanse to control LEDs, control motors, to control lots of things, and that's what's cool about uh, the Raspberry Pi. So it lets us use it as a basis for uh, lots of projects and cool hacks and things like that. So that's that's why we like a uh, Raspberry Pi. Uh, you know, one of the, so the, yeah, some of the things that you can use them for is you can use them to build a little arcade emulator. These are little arcade emulators I found, but. Uh, the the uses of this thing are, lim are limitless. We uh, have uh, we can use them for uh, desktop computing. I, I use, we, we, in the in the with the students. I had them actually use a Raspberry Pi as the as their desktop. So they used log, uh, logged into that and used it to program and write the code in that. So pretty cool. They um, they're really they make really nice media centers. You can take one of these, put it in a case, set it on your set it on. Uh, so this has got an HDMI port. You can set it uh, on your entertainment center, plug it into your H HDMI TV. It, it can run Netflix. It can uh, it, it can uh, run other. Uh, well, it runs a, a specialized uh, uh, XBMC server called Cody, which is really cool. I so say you can even do them for games. Uh, the the standard the the base uh, operating system has uh, Minecraft up to it, so you can teach kids how to program in Minecraft. So that's really cool. Uh, you can set them up as little servers to serve files. Uh, the useless are basically in, in, uh, endless. Oh, and the cool thing we'll talk about in a minute here, and I'll show you is robots. We we, like, we love robots. So, what are the basic ingredients to make a Raspberry Pi? If you're going to make a Raspberry Pi, you, you you just can't. Up until like two days ago, you can't go out and buy that kit I showed you earlier. You had to kind of go out and get your own kits. You can go on Amazon and buy your starter kits, but you're paying a lot of extra money for somebody, and you're getting somebody compiled some parts together. You may not want all those. So you have to figure out, well, you just need a basic kit to get started. So what are you going to get? So the, the the basic thing you need is obviously is a Raspberry Pi motherboard. You get the little motherboard, and that's your starting point. Uh, after that, you're going to need it. It would be nice to have a case, but this little plastic case or some or if you don't want the case, use uh, some standoffs at least uh, to have it. Uh, the 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 computer itself, the Raspberry Pi computer, has one megabyte, uh, one, sorry, one gigabyte of onboard memory, but it doesn't have any type of storage. So you, you need a, at least some type of a, you need a micro SD card typically to do storage. So uh, this one's uh, so this one has a micro SD card, right? It goes in here, so you get the little micro SD card size of your thumb. This is a uh, 16 gigabyte one, and you install your your operating system on that and uh, plug it in, power it on. Um, depending on the version, Raspberry Pi 2s don't have Wi-Fi and or Bluetooth, so you do would have to get a uh, a, uh, a little Wi-Fi dongle to to plug in, and uh, you need a power supply. This uses a standard USB power supply, but I'll get into that a little bit later. And you probably need some type of keyboard, mouse, and Initially, a monitor. You can connect to these things remotely, but anyway, that's nice. That at least that this first column is what you basically need to get to, to get going. You, that's your, your basic stuff. The nice. Th the other nice things to have would be a uh, yeah, be able to get up to a network. Uh, it's nice to put heat sinks on the chips. They get a little warm. If you're going to do any real mess around with the GIPL ports or programming anything, you're going to need a uh, you know probably going to need a, some type of a multimeter to check voltages out. It's really good, handy for debugging. And then, obviously, you'll probably need some small tools like screwdrivers and stuff. Those are always good to have around when you're playing with these. Once you get it, once you get those basic steps, then you can get down, you get started, uh, get, grab yourself an, an operating system. You go out, these are all free operating systems on the internet. Uh, the base, the, the main operating system is Raspbian. That's what, uh, most people use. That's a Debian, uh, Linux distribution. Uh, it has a basic, it's a basic desktop operating system, has everything you need to get going. Uh, it's, it's, uh, fairly secure for the most part after you change your passwords and stuff. It's, it's not, it's, it's a decent little operating system. It's a base of Debian. It's a, it's a, like, a lot like Ubuntu, so it's pretty easy to use. Some people use Noobs. It's a little, Noobs, as it says, is intended for really first time. It's kind of a little bit more of a, of a package that kind of kind of helps you get started a little quicker, but uh, it, it's out there. You, you, know, you can also get a, a flavors of Ubuntu, and you can even run Windows 10 on this thing, Windows 10 IoT Core. 
It, now, this is Windows 10 IoT Core. It's not going to give you Windows 10 Windows 10 capabilities, but what it does allow you to do is it, uh, is it works very well with Windows 10 on your on your computer. So so you can program on your computer, write Visual Basic on your Windows 10 computer, and you click a button and it downloads it straight to the to the Raspberry Pi and it runs the program right on the Raspberry Pi, and it, it's like all integrated. So so you really don't know. You, you, it, it really treats your Raspberry Pi like an accessory to Windows 10, so it's worked, that, that works out really well. Uh, the, then, uh, of course, the fun one we're going to talk about here in a minute is Kali. Uh, and uh, you can also get things like, uh, I should put the right thing, OSMC uh, or this Open Elect. These are the, 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 the media center boxes that I was telling you about. So you, pro you download this and plug it in, and basically it's a media center on, on operations. You plug it in, it boots up, and it's a media center mode. It's got a Nice screen that lets you run media, download video, run YouTube, do all kinds of stuff. That's really cool. And if you want to go play the games like before our, our video games, you can get this RetroPie. Oh. And then you basically, once you download one of these, you install it on a SD card. You need uh, probably need another computer to do that, like a uh, Windows 10 machine, which you would, or a Windows machine, you would win 32 disk imager. If you have a Mac or a Linux, you can just use a command line DD disk duplicator. And... Uh, I, I run mine on a Mac, so I use this command all the time. IF is the OS that I, the, the image of the OS, and then OF is dev, and I use R disk one because uh, you write to the raw disk. It's much faster than writing to the regular disk. And then I found, I, I, after experimenting, the block size, the normal block size, uh, this is about the fastest I can get it to write with a block size of 4 meg. So uh, that, my experimentation found that that was the best uh, command line to get to get the write out to the uh, SD cards on a Mac. Now, I played around a lot with the Raspberry Pi, so I suffered a lot learning these things, so you don't have to. <laughs> uh, things that you get, these are the gotchas that you got to worry about when, when you're doing it, when, you, when you're working there building a Raspberry Pi uh, system. First thing is your power supply. I discovered this the hard way. Power supply quality matters. Uh, you want to make sure you have a good quality power supply. Don't use the power adapter off your iPhone or, or your Android phone. I mean, they say they're, they, they support it. The problem is that the, that, um, the Raspberry Pi is really sensitive to the voltage drop, and it draws a lot of current. So when it draws a lot of current, the voltage will drop a lot. And if it drops below the 5 volts, uh, it, 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 when it starts drawing that 2, that two, two and a half amp, it, uh, it causes the uh, Raspberry Pi to... Uh, to not behave properly, and then it, you can get bad rights to your SD card, and then the whole system kind of dies. Uh, so, so even though it is a micro USB standard, I recommend you, you use the, the official Raspberry Pi power supplies. Uh, they're by Adafruit; they're about eight bucks. But the, the, what the reason that you that you use these is they're actually they they actually supply a five and a quarter volt output, not quite the USB standard, but it overcomes that voltage drop across the wire. And you get five volts at the input of the uh, of the board, and that um, that prevents you from having pro yeah writing problems to the to the uh, SD cards and things like that. So the the other thing is some of the cheaper you got to watch out. Some of the cheaper uh, USB cables, the connection doesn't make a real good connection here. I found lots of lots of times if I was using a cheap cable, the connection here would get really loose and would pop out. So you want to make sure you, you have a good quality cable as well. It, uh, so, so those are the big gotchas. Uh, other, the other major gotcha I found was that even though it, it's standard SD cards, I found the type of SD card matter. Cheap SD cards didn't work well. And the faster the SD card rating, the better. And, I mean, the, 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 the rating on the SD card really does have an impact on how fast the, the system operates. So I, I recommend going with a same disk or a Samsung uh, Class 10 card that writes at greater than 80 megabytes a second. That gives you about the best performance you can get. I tried a Kensington card that they kept crashing on me. They died. I did, uh, so you know, some of those off-brand ones, that you know, I would be leery of them if I'm going to be using them on Raspberry Pi because this is an operates. It, it, even though it is a micro SD card, it's not used in your camera where you just write a picture to it every once in a while. This is a this is actually acting as your hard disk, so the computer is writing to it constantly, and uh, so the performance and the and the uh, you know, the quality of the card matters. So 
spend the two extra bucks and get the Samsung card or the or the SanDisk card and save yourself a lot of heartache. Uh, so so that's the, the learning. So cool. So 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 I got got everything now, and I'm gonna put Kelly Linux on here. So this is this is why why it's cool because I I use these things. I make these little portable hacking rigs out of these things. So so these things are great because look, I got this thing. I drop it in my pocket. And I walk into I walk into your uh, data center. You don't even know I've got it in. I pull it out and and and, and like plug it into plug it into your network switch. I'm recording your network and boom. You know, hey, it's pretty easy. Uh, anybody see Mr. Robot? They put this behind the switch in the in the data center and used it to break in and, and control. Uh, uh, actually, used it to, to overwrite the uh, the, uh, the 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 uh, HVAC system and that caused the caused the video. So so yeah, they're, they're cool hacking devices. But anyway, so Cali, the latest version I just checked. Cali just rolled out a new release for uh, PCs or you know. Uh, Intel makes PCs for Macs and uh, for Mac level, you yeah, PC level uh, 2.2, but the Kali for the Raspberry Pi is still 2.1. Uh, but anyway, you, you can download that. It's a rolling release, which means that it will keep on updating itself as long as you update it, so it's pretty nice. So the the first gotcha when you download that Raspberry Pi image, it's not the full Raspberry, it's not the full Kali Linux that you would get when you download it for your PC, the PCISO. It's, it's it's a it's a little bit different. It's just a basic operating system. So if you want the tools, the cool hacking tools, if you you got to download the Kali Meta packages. So you want to get at a minimum the Kali Linux top ten. That's going to get you a Metasploit, MMAP, Wireshark, Aircrack, those cool tools. The ones that you wrote, that you want to do is the, the, the cool hacking stuff. It, those are the ones you got to get. And to get that, you you just do an app get install Kali Linux top ten. That'll get you. That'll that'll get you up and running. Get you some cool hacky tools. If you want to uh, uh, go to the you know, get the full, then you got to do an app get install Kali Linux full. That'll that'll download all the tools. It takes a long time, uh, but anyway, that, that'll get you there. So we uh, we boot up. Uh, so so you, you you download the OS. You you install it with the db command or the to Win Desk image. You put it in. You power it on, and and uh, you're gonna. You're going to uh, do the do the initial boot. First thing you do, change your password. <laughs> it comes with the default password. It, it does. It's got an account already created uh, for root, at, at, with the default password of tour. If you're going to hook it up to a network, uh, I, I was uh, next door over here, and and a couple of these, they're scanning. The first thing they tr the first thing the hackers try is root, and then they try pi. And that, that's the other, another one that you might run into. Uh, after you change the password, you'll need then to need to resize the hard drive partition because I got a 16 gigabyte card on here, but I downloaded a, an image that was about three and a half, four gigabytes. So it only puts a four gigabyte partition on here. So I have to resize the partition, and I, I just use uh, the uh, built-in uh, command parted, and I go in and I, I set type of parted, and you select the partition for the hard drive, and then you say set it to max size. Once you do that, then you then you run the resize two fs command, and that resizes the file system. And now you got the full 16 gigabyte card available on on the uh, SD card. Once you do that, you set up networking, and then you're off and running. Oh, I said I already said change the password. I said the, the the initial even even on the on the on the Raspbian, if you're doing Raspbian, the initial password in Raspbian is always going to be Pi Raspberry, and if you're in Cali, it's going to be root tour. Those are the first things you got to change. So once you once you get once you get it up and running, you get your network configured. The next thing you want to change is your uh, time zone. So these things are, are the images aren't like uh, that you get on here aren't like an ISO image that doesn't install. And as you're doing the install, you're creating an account and you're configuring times with everything. It's already configured. So we, we, and most of these, since the Raspberry Pi was built in, uh, is a British product. It comes with uh, British time zones and British uh, keyboard setup. So you go in, you got to set up these time zones, the keyboards, the right uh, locale, all that to, U to English, U.S., or whatever flavor of, uh, of uh, language you want to use. But I, I prefer English, U.S. because I don't speak too many other languages. Uh, <laughs> the, the, so set up that work. And then if you want to use those uh, I.O. ports, you have to enable those in the thing. In the uh, in the Raspbian uh, menu, so that that's there. And then uh, what? Then with uh, Kali, you want to do 
you definitely want to do it with Kelly. You want to do a, a, a update your OS. So that's how you, if you uh, up, do that, get update that updates your dis, your uh, distro package, and then you uh, once you do that, you do a dis upgrade, and, and that'll update everything to the latest versions of all the packages that are on the distro. That gets you running. If you're running Kali, uh, you probably want to do some type of vulnerability scanning. Then you can you, uh, open bass is available. You can down, you can get that by doing an apt install open bass, and then uh, run the open bass setup. And open bass setup takes a while because it's downloads some a lot of CVE packages. And there's a, they're huge. It takes a few hours to do that, even with the fast cards on on uh, the Raspberry Pi. Add your user and start it up here. You can run the uh, that you can run open bass, and then the real B and C. That's good. That's a good one to have, uh, so you can remote in and and remote to other machines. So I built my little portable hacking at Raspberry Pi hacking rig. So this is this is where my ingredients and I got. Uh, I got one of these. I got one here. Uh, I actually got that top there, but, but uh, so so this is the cool thing. So this is the little Raspberry Pi hacking rig. This is actually a touchscreen, so it's like a little seven-inch uh, uh, tablet. Uh, and uh, it got the, the Raspberry Pi's installed in here. It's got a web, it's got the camera installed, and uh, it's pretty cool. So, so the, you know that lets me, uh, you know, I can take this in, but pretty much anywhere, uh, and I uh, go do my hack. So, the, you know, I said I got the seven-inch touchscreen, the touchscreen case. So this is a cool little thing to have and and to take around. Uh, you're gonna need a keyboard and mouse. I like I. I like the little Logitech keyboard and mouse here. That one, I get that one. That's a that's a you know, thirty dollar mouse set, set combo over at Staples now, or thirty or forty bucks. Those are good. But you know that's great. But I, if I'm walking around with my Raspberry Pi and, and this and that, or got got it, I don't want to have to pull up a big keyboard and mouse. So so I get a, so I got a little. So I get this little uh, this keyboard. This is a it's got a That that's fun, but but sometimes that's a little bit too big. So I get the I get the remote. Ah, this, this is now you now you really got a got a little stuff. So this is your little remote. It's got the little thumb keyboard here, the little thumb uh, trackpad. So I can put that in my pocket, and boom, I'm I'm going. I'm I'm in. I'm hacking. All right. So 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 that's fun. Uh, I said the cool stuff to have is the uh, the, key, the 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 little the little uh, remote here. Now, what what I found out was that the Raspberry Pi three has built-in Wi-Fi, but it uses a Broadcom chipset, and Broadcom chipset isn't fully supported by. So it works okay and decently with the um, with with Raspbian, the the the, the uh, which is the official distribution that that Raspberry Pi or uh, Organization supports so we so Raspbian works okay with the built-in Wi-Fi, but Kali the the is a little bit behind. It's it's the kernel hasn't caught up with the with the new version of hardware in Raspberry Pi. So, uh, we if you want to do serious hacking, you've got to get at least the little EDMAX. This is the little EDMAX adapter here, a little tiny nine, nano. That's a that's a 802.11n Wi-Fi adapter. It's 150 megabits. That would I found out that I couldn't run MMAP and do basic scanning off of the built-in Wi-Fi on the Raspberry Pi 3 with the with the built-in Wi-Fi. So I went ahead and when I put plugged in this EDMAX one, that at least gets me the capability to to do the basic scanning because this kernel supports it. But it still didn't get me full what I needed because if I wanted to do really really uh, uh, get uh, get into the Wireshark and do some deep uh, do, do some promiscuous mode scanning and native uh, raw scanning of the actual network. I needed to get the uh, this is the uh, so it's a little PP link. It's got the nice antenna on here, so it gives you a better reception. Uh, but it's bigger and it's a little more clumsy, but not quite as fancy. But but at least this one will, will get you. Uh, will let you. Do raw raw traffic monitoring of the network, and then you can see everything that's on the network. So this with, with this thing, then you can start doing some air cracking, cracking 
uh, wi uh, graphing the Wi-Fi WEP and WPA passwords with this. You won't, you won't be able to do that unless you get one of these on the Raspberry Pi. Uh, so so that gets you, that gets us to that level. So that's pretty cool. So so we, we built that. Now let's build a robot. Danger, Will Robinson. We're going to build a robot. Well, that that that's going to be that's a little bit much, but we but so. So, but well, here's a cool shot I found of a, a of robots making a Raspberry Pi. I thought that was the robot. The robots actually made a Raspberry Pi. All right, this is this is an actual robot making a Raspberry Pi. This is an actual robot that's actually making the Raspberry Pi board. But uh, anyway, back to this is what hey we're actually going to build is this uh, this is called a Pi Borg Diddy Borg. Uh, This is uh, I, I keep coming back over here so I can talk to the microphone. Hey, uh, this is made by again a company in England. Uh, it's uh, by a company called Pyboard, and it, you, it comes as a kit. It has uh, it has six 12 volt motors that run the wheels. Uh, it, you get the chassis, uh, the parts, and everything to put it all together. So you get the kit. The only thing you have to supply is your Raspberry Pi. It also has a mount for a camera, the Raspberry Pi camera, if you want to. So by the Raspberry Pi camera there, that's there as well. So so that's cool. So that's what you get. That's what you start out with. And then you have to put all that together. So the the um, the uh, this this piece right here is the critical piece to the whole thing. This is the, the what they call the Pico board reverse. That's the controller that that controls the motor. So that's basically your 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 uh, motor controller uh, for the for the for the uh, wheels. So the the Raspberry Pi basically talks to it, and it tells it to set a voltage to the wheels, and then that thing will apply the voltage to the wheels, and then it then it'll run around. Uh, but you know, I got that kit, and it came with 12 volt. It, 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 it runs on uh, uses this little adapter up here and runs on AA batteries. Eh? AA batteries is a bit of a pain, so I said, "Look, I can do better than that." I went out and got an RC car battery, uh, 12 volt RC car pack, 2,000 milliamp hours, 10 cell with the uh, uh, NICAD battery uh, that supports fast charge. So if I use this little, this, this is a little fast charge here, I can charge that, that charge that battery pack in 15 minutes, and that'll that'll run for several hours uh, on the Raspberry Pi. I can run around for about two hours, uh, two to three hours. Using that battery pack, and they can charge it in 15 minutes and be up and running. So, so, so that's cool. So, I made it a little bit more. So, I had my kids build it this summer uh, in the in the camp. So here here I was help kind of helping them out and getting started. There, you, you can see they're putting them together. They they start out and they're adding, uh, putting them all together, and they they add the wheels. Uh, they were real excited about getting this and going. They got they finally got it built. Then they were. Then they got up and they tested them and ran them around. Uh, some of them broke, so we had to have a pit. Uh, so that's the pit. Uh, <laughs> as you can see, we have some some uh, epoxy there. Uh, yeah, they actually had one, that that one. That one, the wheel fell off, so we had to we had to repair a few. The, ki the kids, they were they were pretty good. These these are pretty tiny parts, and they had a, so, some of them did real good job putting together. Some of them. The quality control wasn't quite as good, and then this is our our you know, fueling station back there. That's all of our battery chargers, and there's, there's a little battery as you can see. That's a little charger. So so we were going through that, and there's my multimeter, so I could debug them and everything. So so that that was fun. Uh, we took them uh, we took them over to a, a big room, and uh, they set up their uh, their their computers. So this was the command center. So they, they they set up here and they were they uh, were able to to uh, create and control these uh, robots um, and then they 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 were able to take it and run them they they ran them through the, through an we we had an obstacle horse set up and they ran them through so they so they would run them around these cones and things like that so that, so that that was cool so let's see here is this gonna work no my video because that that's supposed to be a video. Shoot! Oh well. All right. So the video doesn't not going to work. Anyway, so 
the video ran here, they ran around. Um, anyway, so w what the students learned was, okay, so the, the students learned how to use the Raspberry Pis, uh, which is cool. They, they, none of them really had any experience with the Raspberry Pi, so they were able to actually, you know, this is the first time they're putting together computers and, and putting, putting together uh, parts and things like that. So they actually saw, you know, they're used to seeing cell phones that are, they, they can't even see a chip in this, so they didn't really know what's going on. So, so they actually get to see chips and see pins and, see, and, and you know, show, show them that they're actually, you know, that w what a computer really is. Uh, and then they're able to see that, hey, yeah, I can log into these things and, like I said, with, when, when, you, when you first power them up, these things are totally insecure. Anybody can remotely log into it. And, the, and some of the kids took advantage of that. They said, well, I'm going to log into that one over there and bug it. And so, that, that, well, yeah, so some kids were trying to, to log in and do things. And the other kids would be, another kids would be trying to log in. And, and uh, it, it, got, it kind of got to be a little mess. We had to, we had put, had to put a ban on hacking in the class. But uh, <laughs> it, it was fine. But, but uh, it, it, the point is that they, they got to see that, hey, I have a I have a computer I, I can control it when when I, when I when I do certain things it, ca it causes you know the, causes the motors it, it actually causes real world effects so, so we we show them that that you know, by by hacking and doing things you can create things that that can have effect in the real world so we actually have so they actually see actually see consequences to things that they were doing so that that was part of the cool thing. Uh, yeah, obviously the, the you know, we, we definitely learned some basic security puzzles like least privilege. Like uh, you don't want to let the whole world have access to your robot because anybody could log it in and remotely take it over. Um, you know that that was the basic uh, that gave us the basic uh, portion of the class. So, so they so they had fun with that. Uh, lots lots of cool stuff. But you know wh where I'm going to go next with this is. Uh, yeah, I want to add more sensors onto this. Like uh, right now, it's just a it, it's 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 a it's pretty much a remote control car at this point because the way they the, what they do is they is they they run a web server on here that creates a web page and then you log into the web page and the web page basically has it has directional controls like go forward, go back, turn left, turn right. You, it, you can access the camera, but it, but it's pretty much uh, it's pretty much uh, just uh, Remote control. You can write programs on it that says, you know, go five feet, take turn left, go go three feet, take, turn right. You know, you can do some basic stuff like that. But in order for it to, to, to really become an, become cool, and is that we we to put some sensors on it so it can become more autonomous. So we can say, you know, follow, you know, follow a line, or you know, run into you to find a wall, and don't, and then once you find a wall, turn around, don't run into walls and things like that. So that's cool. Uh, some of the things, other things I'm going to be doing is I'm going to set up Raspberry Pi clusters. I, I'm going to get about tw 20 to 30 of these and hook them up as a cluster. And a uh, couple, couple of concepts I got going there is uh, one is I'm going to create a capture the flag uh, kind of a ba ca uh, field for them where they're going to be able to remotely log in and tell these, this cluster of Raspberry Pis and find flags. So I, they'll be able to go and like turn on lights and cr turn on buzzers and do cool stuff like that. Uh, might even at one point I'm going to try to get. I got a bunch of these robots. I got. I got enough that I think I can get them to play chess. So that's one, another cool thing I want to get them to do. So so uh, so the robots will autonomously play chess against one another. That would be cool. Uh, and uh, I don't have security engine running on here. So so if anybody wants to compile security engine for Raspberry Pi, let me know. Uh, but <laughs> I'm going to be attempting that. So. So I, I talked to Doug. He won't he won't compile it for Raspberry Pi for me yet. I, I don't know why. Uh, but anyway, that, 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 that's one of the things. That's one of the things I'm gonna try try to do too. Because because I, I think these would make cool sensors. Because like I said, they're so small you can put them anywhere on the network. So that, that that's basically where I, where I am with that. So with that, that's kind of where where I am. So uh, we'll open it up for questions and answers and. Hmm. Yeah, 
that, that that's what for, for my uh, for my little hacking rig or, or this little guy here. Yeah, uh, I, I've actually had powered this with the with the with the with the battery pack. So, so yeah, the, the, that works really well. So so yeah, you have a self-contained, uh, almost like a laptop. It's a laptop's actually a little bit more convenient to take for hacking, but but this is cool because you know it, it's kind of different and gives you it's a little small and, and you could you could you could drop it behind or something like that. That's that's one of the cool things about about that. All right, so so in order for them to remotely control them, what they did was uh, they, they installed uh, the Raspbian operating system on the Raspberry Pi. They ran a web server on the Raspberry Pi. Then they remotely connected to the to the web server. Then they then they connected to the web server through a web page. The web page had had, had the controls on it. So then they were, were able to remote control that either through a computer or you could also connect to it through your phone. Uh, I was going to try to set up a demo, but uh, I ran out of time, and I didn't think I would have enough time to get it going here. But, but it actually, I could actually, it'll actually, it, it's a uh, so so it's more like a it's more like having a it's kind of like a remote control. It's kind of like uh, you ever see the parrot uh, droids, you know, the same thing where you control it with your iPhone. It works a lot like that. Yeah. All right. Uh, well, I got a couple. I got a couple of questions here. So. Uh, is, we'll do some administration since this is a Raspberry Pi session. Uh, I got the hacker playbook. Does anybody know who the creator of Raspberry Pi was? Uh, close. N nobody. What? Yeah, that's it. So, does anybody recall the name of the robot? Diddy Borg. Yeah, I, I think I heard it over here first. <laughs> yeah, the, 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 the company's platform was 